do you have like do you feel like i will, can never watch creed 3 kind of thing never yeah no and and not not that like I, michael b joy is a nice guy the, it, the studio is wonderful but it's just the it's been such a real rough emotional ride that's all yeah and it really has now if michael b jordan we come up with a story i'll do creed 4 with him mm -hmm. as long as the other fellow is not involved man the love pouring in for cat williams is insane like everyone's talking about that wild interview he did on club shay you know it blew up big time with almost 60 million views it was like the whole world was glued to their screens and get this sylvester stallone yeah rocky himself seems to be hopping on the Cat Williams train now. I know, right? It's kind of surprising because they're from totally different parts of Hollywood. But word on the street is Sly's not just showing support. He's got some gossip of his own to spill. Rumor has it, despite Stallone's massive success, he's faced his fair share of Hollywood drama. I mean, even a big shot like him isn't immune to the cutthroat nature of Tinseltown. Can you blame him for wanting to let off some steam? Hollywood's known for its ruthless side, and even the biggest names aren't safe. So if Stallone's ready to dish it out like Cat, then grab the popcorn, because this showdown's gonna be epic. Now let's talk Stallone. He's practically a Hollywood legend, right? From Rocky to The Expendables, the guys made his mark on the big screen. But here's the twist. Despite being the mastermind behind Rocky, he doesn't actually own the rights to the franchise. Crazy, huh? So. Last year, Michael B. Jordan rocked the screen with Creed 3. But wait a minute, where's our guy Stallone as Rocky Balboa? I mean, he was right there with Jordan in the first two Creed movies, even nabbing an Oscar nod for his killer performance in the 2015 debut. But in Creed 3, nowhere to be found. Sure, they mention Rocky's name a bit, but his actual presence, total mystery. And get this, it's the first time in a whopping nine films and a staggering 47 years that a Rocky movie doesn't have Rocky Balboa in it. So what's the deal with the disappearing act? Well, it seems Stallone wasn't really feeling the vibe of Creed 3. Plus, he's been having a bit of a spat with Erwin Winkler, the big cheese producer of the Rocky franchise. And their feud? Still ongoing. Creed 3, penned by Keenan Coogler and Zach Balin. From a story they cooked up with the original Creed director Ryan Coogler, is a much darker take on the usually uplifting Rocky series. According to VAR's film critic Owen Glaberman, this one's more of a gritty thriller than your typical underdog sports drama. Now here's where it gets juicy. Stallone, the man behind Rocky himself, had some thoughts about the direction they took with Creed 3. He wasn't exactly thrilled about the whole darker tone situation. He told TH that he's more of a sentimentalist, preferring his heroes to take a beating, but not venture into that deep, dark space. But wait, it's not just Stallone in the ring. Michael B. Jordan, who's been killing it as Adonis Creed, had his own vision for the movie. He wanted to focus solely on Adonis without the safety net of Rocky by his side. Makes sense, right? The first Creed was all about their dynamic duo, while Creed II saw Adonis forging his own path. So for Jordan, it was a natural progression to let Adonis shine solo in Creed III. Stallone's clash with Winkler is an even bigger reason for his absence in Creed III. It's so big that it might mean Stallone never plays Rocky again. These two have been at odds for ages over who owns the rights to the Rocky franchise. Can you believe it? Stallone basically handed over those rights back in the day when he was just a struggling actor, not realizing the gold mine he had on his hands. Now, fast forward to last November, and Stallone spills the tea to Sirius XM's Jessica Shaw. He's talking about how cutting ties with the Rocky franchise for Creed 3 was one heck of an emotional roller coaster. According to him, you can't just make peace with someone who's been as shady as Winkler has been in Stallone's book, at least. You brought up the with Erwin Winkler and how he has has he has the rights to Rocky, which is unfathomable no, to a lot of people. It's unheard. Never happened before. It's it's crazy. I would literally be in therapy every day for the rest of it's my hard, life. You know. Um, do you kind of like make peace at a certain point? No, or? Uh, you know, you can't make peace. I mean, uh, let's be realistic here. You can't make peace when someone has been so so nefarious in my in my opinion, so like horrible because everyone made out well check this out stallone isn't holding back when it comes to expressing his frustrations back in 2019 he spilled it all in an interview with variety despite making bank from the original rocky and scoring some sweet deals on the sequels stallone doesn't have control over those beloved characters 
The feud between Stallone and Winkler over the Rocky rights flared up again in 2022. Stallone threw some serious shade in a now-deleted Instagram post, sharing a pic of Winkler depicted as a snake with a tongue made of knives. Quite the flattering portrait of the legendary Rocky Creed producer, right? A very flattering portrait of the great Rocky Creed producer Erwin Winkler from one of the country's greatest artists. Also, after Erwin controlling Rocky for over 47 years, and now Creed, I really would like to have at least a little of what's left, my rights back, before passing it on to only your children. I believe that would be a fair gesture from this 93-year-old gentleman. This is a painful subject that eats at my soul because I wanted to leave something of Rocky for my children. But it's always great hearing from the loyal fans. Keep punching, Stallone wrote in the caption. But hold on, it gets even spicier. A few weeks later, MGM dropped the bomb that they were working on a new Rocky spin-off movie focused on the Drago family. Dolph Lundgren, who starred as Rocky's Russian rival Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, and Florian Muntianu, who debuted as Ivan's son in Creed II, were on board. Stallone publicly voiced his opposition to the spin-off, claiming he was never informed about its development. Another heartbreaker, just found this out once again, Erwin Winkler, this pathetic 94-year-old producer and his moronic, useless vulture children. Charles and David are once again picking clean the bones of another wonderful character I created without even telling me. I apologize to the fans. I never wanted Rocky characters to be exploited by these parasites. By the way, I have nothing but respect for Dolph, but he never told me what was going on behind my back with the character I created for him. Real friends are more precious than gold, Stallone added at the time. Lundgren eventually chimed in, urging Rocky fans to relax after Stallone criticized the spinoff. He cleared things up about the potential Drago spinoff. Dolph Lundgren stepped in to set the record straight. He made it clear that there's no approved script, no deals in place, and no director locked in. Plus, he personally thought his buddy Sly Stallone was on board as a producer, or maybe even an actor. Lundgren addressed a press leak from that time, calling it unfortunate, and assured fans that he'd been in touch with Mr. Balboa, a playful nod to Stallone's iconic character, to put any worries to rest. So there you have it, just to set the record straight regarding a possible Drago spinoff. There's no approved script, no deals in place, no director, and I was personally under the impression that my friend Sly Stallone was involved as a producer or even as an actor. There was a press leak last week which was unfortunate. In touch with Mr. Balboa, just so all the fans can relax. There you go. While Stallone and Lundgren might have patched things up, Stallone still got some heat with Winkler. As long as Winkler's holding onto the keys to the Rocky Kingdom, it seems like Stallone's beloved character might be stuck in cinematic limbo. But hey, Stallone isn't one to stay quiet about Hollywood's wrongs. Remember when he spoke out against the discrimination his buddy Carl Weathers faced before he passed away? It's like Stallone's always ready to stand up for what's right, both on and off the screen. Just recently, Sylvester Stallone paid a touching tribute to Carl Weathers, his dear friend and collaborator who tragically passed away. Stallone, visibly shaken, stood before a painting capturing a significant moment between the two, pouring out his emotions to honor Weathers. In a raw and heartfelt moment, Stallone shared, Hello everyone, today is an incredibly sad day for me. I mean, I've, I'm so torn up, I can't even tell you. I'm just trying to hold it in because Carl Weathers was such an integral part of my life, my success, everything about it. I, I give him incredible credit and kudos because when he walked into that room and I saw him for the first time, I saw greatness, but I didn't realize how great. I never could have accomplished what we did with Rocky without him. He was absolutely brilliant. His voice, his size, his power, his athletic ability, but more importantly, his heart, his soul. He didn't hold back in giving credit to Weathers, acknowledging the profound impact he had on his own life and the success of the iconic Rocky franchise. On screen and off. Yeah, it really was. I mean, it still chokes me up. I was numb to the fact, because I saw him as Superman. Mm -hmm. He really was. He had the voice, the talent, the humor, mm -hmm. he had it all. So he, I couldn't have made it without him because he just brought that element, you know? Yeah, when people think of Rocky, but it's Rocky and Apollo. Oh, I, I mean, you wrote it. <laughs>
This tribute really tugs at the heartstrings, giving us a glimpse into the deep impact Carl Weathers had on Stallone, both in his professional and personal life. Seeing Stallone nearly break down while honoring his buddy Weathers was just heart-wrenching. It got a lot of fans wondering if there might be more to Weathers' passing, something Stallone might need to talk about. Stallone spilled some tea on the discrimination Weathers faced, especially in the Rocky series. It's crazy to think that Weathers wasn't even considered for the role of Apollo Creed at first. But here's the kicker. He only got the part because Stallone fought for him. Imagine if Sly hadn't stood up for Carl. We might have missed out on one of the most iconic characters in movie history. So how did Carl win the part if the studio wasn't feeling him? Here's the juicy part. He straight up insulted Sylvester Stallone during their script reading. Yep, you heard it right. Weathers dropped a comment that was so Apollo Creed-esque that Stallone couldn't ignore it. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Stallone spilled the beans, saying Weathers' remark felt so authentic to the character that he just had to cast him. So here's where things get wild. Stallone, being the mastermind behind the script, knew exactly how each character should come off on the screen. Instead of getting offended by Weathers' bold and arrogant responses during the audition, he was pleased. Stallone thought, this dude is the perfect fit for Apollo Creed. So, our man Carl unintentionally disrespected Rocky himself, but little did he know that his outburst was exactly what Stallone believed exemplified the swagger of Apollo Creed. It's one of those moments where mistakes actually work in your favor. Weathers' brash and bold attitude during the audition not only landed him the gig, but also made him a star. He carried that swagger and confidence through the entire 1980s, becoming an action hero for those who look more like him than his white counterparts. Now, another chapter in how Carl Weathers kicked down the doors of Hollywood discrimination was through the legendary movie Predator. This 1987 action horror flick was a whole different vibe from the Rocky series, but Weathers' character Dylan was still breaking norms for a black man in those times. You've got to appreciate how it all played out in Predator. Weathers' Dylan wasn't just another sidekick or a token character, Nope, he was on the same level as the big man himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Dutch. Picture this, Dylan and Dutch's greeting was basically the most testosterone-filled handshake in cinema history. That moment, now a meme sensation, was more than just a cool visual. It was a powerful statement, especially considering the late 1980s Hollywood scene. Dylan! You son of a bitch. What's the matter? The CIA got you pushing too many pencils? Let's put it into perspective. Schwarzenegger was the absolute king of the movie world back then, a former Mr. Universe, or as Weathers cheekily dubbed him on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson in 1988, Mr. Everything. And here's the kicker. Arnie rarely, if ever, found his match on screen. I mean, the dude lifted a tree trunk and carried it like a bag of groceries in Commando. But then came Predator, and director John McTiernan flipped the script. Weathers' character in Predator Dylan wasn't just there to play second fiddle. He received the same respect typically reserved for the action figures Schwarzenegger usually played. Even when Dylan loses the arm wrestling match in that famous scene, the implication is that it's only because his new CIA desk job softened him up a little. It was like a cinematic revolution, breaking stereotypes and giving Weathers the spotlight he rightfully deserved. Predator turned into a game changer, proving that Weathers could stand toe to toe with the biggest star on the planet, both on and off screen. Weathers' character in Predator Dylan wasn't just there to play second fiddle. He received the same respect typically reserved for the action figures Schwarzenegger usually played. Even when Dylan loses the arm wrestling match in that famous scene, the implication is that it's only because his new CIA desk job softened him up a little. It was like a cinematic revolution, breaking stereotypes and giving Weathers the spotlight he rightfully deserved. Predator turned into a game changer, proving that Weathers could stand toe to toe with the biggest star on the planet, both on and off screen. But hold up, things are about to take a darker turn. While Sylvester Stallone may be famous for many things, it turns out controversy seems to have a bit of a soft spot for him. I mean, the dude climbed the ladder from total obscurity to being one of Hollywood's biggest names thanks to his unforgettable performances as the ultimate macho man. But here's the thing. Behind all that flashy action and machismo, 
Stallone's personal life isn't exactly a walk in the park. Sure, he's got that rugged charm on screen, but off screen, let's just say he's not exactly winning any awards for being Mr. Nice Guy. So picture this. It's a regular February morning in 2016, right before the whole Hash Me Too movement really took off. You're scrolling through your newsfeed, sipping on your morning coffee, when bam, headlines hit you like a ton of bricks. So here's the scoop. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office has made a call saying there's not enough evidence to prosecute Sylvester Stallone over some dirty business allegations from 1987 and 1990. According to a document released in 2018, the allegations from a woman in Santa Monica, California are also outside the statute of limitations. The charge evaluation worksheet by the district attorney's office, seen by Reuters, mentioned that the victim, whose name was blacked out, stated she and Stallone had a consensual relationship in 1987. The victim alleged Stallone did things to her in 1987 and 1990, providing witnesses. However, the document noted, none of the fresh complaint witnesses corroborated the victim's allegations. Further investigation didn't turn up any additional corroboration. According to the police report, the teen didn't want to pursue charges against Stallone and Duca, though she told police she was scared and humiliated. The Daily Mail reports that she later signed a no prosecution form and the matter was dropped. The actor had also previously faced similar charges by his late half-sister, who threatened him with a lawsuit in 1987. The charges were settled out of court. DeLuca, the other accused in the police report from 1986, later got involved in a police shootout incident at Port Huiname in 2013. But that's not all. Stallone's All-American Workhorse brand continues to be marred by a string of allegations, all of which Stallone has denied. In 2018, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office said there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute the star over allegations that he was involved with a woman in 1987 and 1990. The issue was raised in 2017, and according to NBC, it was outside of the statute of limitations. Then, back in 2007, the actor pleaded guilty to illegally importing 48 vials of banned human growth hormone into Australia. According to Reuters, Stallone said he was taking the hormones under a doctor's supervision for a medical condition. He added that he was not aware of customs rules and did not intend to break the law. There has long been commentary about Stallone's alleged use of steroids too, but when his ex-girlfriend Janice Dickinson claimed she had seen him use steroids, he denied it. Before he rose to fame in the iconic Rocky film, Stallone was just another actor trying to make it big. In 1970, when he was 24 years old, he got the lead role in an adult film called The Party at Kitty and Studs. According to Far Out magazine, it was Stallone's first shot at being on the big screen. Per the publication, Stallone said he was living in a bus station at the time, and it was either do that movie or rob someone because he was at the end of his rope. The film was later re-released under the title The Italian Stallion, in an attempt to capitalize on Stallone's fame. And then there's the feud with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were pitted against each other as major rivals at the height of their careers. So it's no surprise that there were bad vibes between Arnold and Stallone at some point. They were portrayed as major rivals at the peak of their careers. So it's not shocking that there were some sour vibes between Arnold and Stallone at one point. According to CNN, Schwarzenegger, who also dropped a Netflix documentary earlier this year, confirmed this, saying things got pretty intense and they both tried to undermine each other. However, Schwarzenegger added that their dynamic shifted when they both decided to invest in Planet Hollywood. This move saw the two jetting around the globe together to promote the business, and eventually, they became friends. So, Stallone's tale just goes to show that celebrities aren't exempt from drama. It's like they're just regular folks dealing with their fair share of messiness, only with the whole world watching. But despite all the ups and downs, Stallone still boasts a massive fan base. He's the people's champ through and through. In the end, Sylvester Stallone's journey through fame and controversy reminds us that celebrities are not immune to the complexities of life. From his rise to stardom with the iconic Rocky series, to the tumultuous moments and allegations he faced, Stallone's story is a testament to resilience amidst adversity. His eventual friendship with Arnold Schwarzenegger, born out of shared ventures and mutual respect, underscores the unpredictability of relationships in the spotlight. Through it all, 
Stallone retains a devoted fan base, cementing his status as the people's champ, beloved for both his on-screen charisma and his enduring spirit.